Hello, Monetization Nation. I'm Nathan Gwilliam, your host, and today we're going to talk about seven takeaways from the TV series, The Chosen for Entrepreneurs. So if you haven't watched The Chosen, I highly recommend it. Uh, the Chosen is my favorite TV series of all time. It's in season two, and it is a, a series about the life of Jesus Christ. But growing up, I've, I've seen many different uh, series and media productions about Jesus Christ, and none of them have connected with me and resonated with me in the way that, that this production does. And I think what makes this production so different is that they humanize Jesus Christ and the apostles and the other characters uh, that are in this show. And as a result of, of this connection that comes from humanizing, uh, the Chosen's become incredibly successful. They're the number one highest crowdfunded media project of all time. In 2019, they completed their funding for season one. More than 75,000 people contributed more than $10 million. Then uh, one year later, November of 2020, they completed fundraising um, for season two, and they raised tw uh, $10 million from 125,000 people. And as we uh, are recording at this time, it's December of 2021, so a little bit over a year past that, and I believe they've raised more than $17 million already for season three. They're raising more for season three, I believe, because they're having to build out some sets and, and things like that. So the first point that I, I want to look at is, is this business model that they've taken. They they went a completely different direction than almost every single other Hollywood production. Uh, they started off not by saying, how do we make as much money as possible? That wasn't their goal. They asked themselves, what is the most important thing for us to achieve? And the answer to that question was, we want to reach as many people as possible with this message, with this story. They wanted their, their production to be seen a billion times. And they knew that if they followed the traditional path and they put it in, in movie theaters, they just couldn't reach those kinds of numbers because so many people around the world wouldn't be able to pay for it. And so they started off, they asked the right question, what matters most? The answer was reaching a billion people. And then they asked themselves, okay, what is the most effective way to reach that most important goal? And they decided that giving away the movie and letting people watch this or this this series, multi-series production uh, for free was the most effective way to get it watched by as many people as possible, which was their goal. So they decided to give it away for free. This is a very important lesson as well. We as entrepreneurs too often start with a product and then try to find an audience to sell our product to. And I think that's the wrong order. Um, just like The Chosen here, they didn't start with, how do I create a movie that I can sell? They started off with creating the thing that's going to help them achieve the most important goal, and, and they gave it away for free. They gave away the most valuable thing, being able to watch this, um, this production for free, the series for free, and they've been just publishing it on YouTube and publishing it on their app and, and publishing it for uh, the world to see. In fact, I think they are the first project that's had an app created in every single country because their goal was truly to reach as many people as possible. And they've been translating it to a, a horde of different languages because their goal is to get as many people to watch it as possible. So again, as business owners, start with the most important goal, figure the most important effective way to get there. And let's start off by giving away value for free. And then once you give away value for free, you've built an audience, you've helped people to know you and like you and trust you, then you monetize in another way. For example, with The Chosen, they do merchandise sales. Or this Christmas, they did a special Christmas um, episode that went to theaters first and 
and did amazing in theaters, made a lot of money, and then they released it for free. Um, the Chosen has, has made money in other ways through donations, um, and they've allowed donors at certain levels to come be part of, of certain filming you know, behind the scenes. So again, give something away for free that people want the most, build an audience, build fans, help people know, like you, and trust you, and then monetize in a different way. That is the best business model that I know of. I think that's the best business model on the planet. The next thing that I want to talk about from the, that entrepreneurs can learn from the chosen is, is to set a big, hairy, audacious goal. They didn't just try to create a few episodes. They didn't just try to get it in movie theaters and, and break a box office record, but they wanted to get a billion people to watch their series. I often say that it's easier to achieve a big goal than it is a small goal. Because when we set a big goal, it's easier to invest the resources. It's easier to pay the price that's necessary to achieve it. It's easier to get buy-in and support from other people. Sometimes it, it's a lot harder when, when the goal is small to get people um, excited and to get the resources we need to do it. So think big, think and set a big, hairy, audacious goal. The next thing that I want to talk about that entrepreneurs can learn from the chosen comes from a story. And um, this happens in the first um, season in episode seven. And Jesus and his disciples are walking past Matthew's um, tax collector booth. Matthew is a tax collector and he was a Jew, but the Jews saw him as a as disloyal because he was taxing his own people, what he was doing to his own people. And Jesus catches Matthew's eye as he walks by, just for a split second. Then Christ turns and looks at Matthew in the eye and says, Matthew, Matthew, son of Alphaeus, follow me. And as we know, Matthew becomes one of the apostles. And Matthew hesitates for a moment, and then he responds by simply asking, me? And Jesus laughs and says, yes, you. Matthew immediately grabs his things and locks his hut. Gaius, his Roman escort, grabs him and says, have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're going to throw it all away? And Matthew simply responds, yes, and walks off to join Jesus. I learned from this story that when we know what the right thing is to do, we should immediately do it and not worry about the consequences. The next lesson that I want to teach comes immediately after that story with Matthew. Immediately after Jesus asked Matthew to follow him, Simon Peter strongly objects and he asks Jesus, what are you doing? Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? And Jesus simply responds, yes. Simon objects again, whoa, do you have any idea what this guy has done? I don't get it. Jesus replied to Simon, you didn't get it when I chose you either. Simon's response was, but this is different. I'm not a tax collector. And then I love Jesus' response. He says, get used to different. As entrepreneurs, we are part of a constantly changing business ecosystem with tectonic shifts all around us. And sometimes we try to hold on to what we did and what our businesses have been doing for the last 20 years. Just because they worked for us 20 years ago doesn't mean that they're the right thing to do today in today's business landscape. So very often we as businesses need to not hold on to the past and we need to get used to different. The next lesson that I think entrepreneurs can learn from The Chosen hasn't actually happened in in the episodes yet of The Chosen, but it's something that Dallas Jenkins, who's the producer of The Chosen, talks about regularly. And he says, it's not our job to feed the 5,000. It's our job to bring the loaves and the fish. Sometimes entrepreneurs feel that they've got to do it all, that the weight is on their shoulders. And sometimes we just have to remember that God hasn't asked us to feed the 5,000. Dallas Jenkins is referring to the parable where the people just had to bring a few loaves and a few fishes, and God did the multiplying. The people didn't have to do the multiplying. They just had to bring their part, and God took care of the miracle. 
And so often that's true in our lives and in our businesses. We don't have to feed the 5,000s. We don't, we don't have to carry all of the weight that is on our shoulders all the time. Sometimes it's just our job to do our part, to do the best we can, to bring metaphorically our loaves and fishes and then pray and trust God to feed those 5,000. The last lesson that I want to talk about today that entrepreneurs can learn from the chosen comes from the story of Mary Magdalene. In season one, Christ redeems Mary Magdalene and she's possessed by evil spirits and Christ redeems her and, and says unto her, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. And it's a very precious moment and she's converted and, and she follows him. And then later in season two, she has a relapse and she goes back to some of the bad behaviors in her previous life. She takes some money with her, I believe, and she goes uh, back to gambling and, and doing some of the things that Christ redeemed her from. And two of the disciples go and they find Mary and they're able to convince her to come back to the camp with Christ and the disciples. And there's a very touching scene, probably the most uh, moving scene to me in The Chosen so far, is when Mary Magdalene with Mary, the mother of Christ, uh, walk into this tent where, where Christ is. And I'm going to paraphrase uh, the conversation just to shorten it, but Mary tells Christ how she's so ashamed. So Mary says, I'm so ashamed. You redeemed me and I just threw it all away. And Christ responds, that's not much of redemption if it can be lost in a day, is it? Mary replies, I owe you everything. I just don't think I can do it. Christ says, do what? And Mary says, live up to it, repay you. I, I just can't live up to it. And Christ says, well, that's true, but you don't have to. I just want your heart. Give us that that you already have and the rest will come in time. Did you really think you would never struggle or sin again? Mary says, I'm just so sorry. And Christ tells her to look up. And finally she does. And she looks up at him and Christ says, I forgive you. And it's over. So here are seven key takeaways that I think entrepreneurs can learn from the chosen so far. Number one, don't do things the normal way. Find your most important goal like reaching a billion views is for the chosen, then figure out the most effective way to accomplish that, like giving it away for free through a crowdfunding campaign. Number two, give value first. So often businesses, they create a product and try to sell a product, but I think they have it backwards. Like the chosen, they've given away value first, then people got to know them and like them and trust them, and then they were able to monetize in different ways such as the merchandise or selling um, upgraded access to be part of, of filming episodes. Number three thing that entrepreneurs can learn is to humanize their business, kind of like The Chosen has humanized the characters and, and built a much stronger connection with their audience through that humanization. Number four, we as entrepreneurs need to get used to different. We need to embrace tectonic shifts and changes and disruptions, if, at least for the things that are better in our lives and businesses. We need to not hold on to things that are holding us back. Just because something has always been done a certain way in the past doesn't mean that's the right thing for us going forward. Number five, we need to do the best we can and then trust God to do his part. Our job is to bring the loaves and the fishes. His job is to feed the 5,000. We need to clearly understand the difference between our role and his role. Now, that's not an excuse for us to not do everything we can. We need to do the best we can. We need to do everything in our power, but then we need to trust him to do his part. Number six, when we know what the right thing is to do, we need to do it immediately, regardless of what the consequences are. Kind of like Matthew did when he chose to follow Christ. And number seven, we need to be servant leaders like Christ. We need to help others, forgive others, love others, and give grace like Christ did with Mary Magdalene. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode, and I wish you success in everything that's important for you.